Okay, let's get to lesson 3.1 in algebra, introduction to functions. Uh, it starts off with graphing basics, which we covered a little bit of earlier, where you've got uh, a coordinate plane, and when they give you a point, say, 2, 4, you go from, you start here, this middle point is 0, 0, and it's called the origin. Uh, so you start at the origin, and you go 1, 2, uh, to the right 2, and then up 4, and you give yourself a point. And uh, that is point 2, 4. Uh, negative 2, negative 4 would be similar. Negative 2, negative 4, it would be down here. And those two points together would form a line. That's, that's the basics. Um, that's what they go over here in this first section. Uh, that The one term I uh, skipped earlier was origin. So make sure you remember that one, that the, the dead center of the coordinate plane is called the origin. So a function is written out like this. Let's go plus 1. So f of x equals 3x plus 1. Do I have too much light in here? That seems better. Uh, f of x equals 3x plus 1, where uh, you have two variables. You have the independent variable and the dependent variable. This x is your independent. On this side of the equation is the independent, because it's the thing that you can change. Uh, and you can make it any number. You can insert 1 for x, or 20 for x, or 100 for x. It's independent. And when you change that x, it'll change the function of x. That's the dependent variable. So whatever you put in for x, let's say you put in 1, 3 times 1 is 1, uh, or, sorry, 3 times 1 is 3, 3 plus 1 is 4. So function of x would be 4. So if you put in 1, it becomes 4 it's dependent on whatever you put in here. So the dependent variable goes here, independent goes here. Independent, dependent. Next, they want you to know about uh, tables that give you functions and determining whether those tables represent a function or not. Uh, let me write up an example real quick. All right, here's the example they give you. In this uh, table, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1 produces a 1, 2 produces a 2, 3 produces a 3, so on and so forth. Each item in this column produces exactly one item in this column. Uh, there's no repeating in this column, so this counts as a function. Over here, you've got two zeros producing two different numbers. 0 produces 3, 0 produces negative 3 can't do that. Negative 3 produces 0, 3 produces 0. So you have this doubling up where you've got two zeros here and you've got two zeros here. That can't happen. That's uh, why this one is not a function. This one is a function because uh, one item produces one item, so on and so forth. This one has doubling up in the column, so it is not a function. Sometimes they'll give you graphs. Uh, instead of tables and ask you to determine whether it's a function. There is a test called the vertical line test where you imagine a vertical line and you sort of pass that vertical line from left to right and you see if at any point you see if at any point the line touches two points simultaneously. If we pass this vertical line through here, you see it's only ever touching one point. Through this parabola, it's only ever touching one point. But if we move it through this circle, when it's in the middle, it's got one point on top, one point on bottom. So it's touching two points at once, which means it is not a function. So this is, this is, and this is not. 
Okay, next we're going to talk about domain and range. Domain equals all the x's. And range, you guessed it, equals all the y's. So, remember that in every point it goes x comma y. So this is 1 comma 0 which is the domain is 1, the range is 0. The domain is 2, domain 3, domain 4. So the domain of this chart is 1, 2, 3, 4. The range is 0, 1, 2, 3. The domain is all the x's, the range is all the y's. So you would write it out like, you'd write it out like this, with this little swoopy bird bracket, is what I think of it as. Um, uh, and you would just pull out the 1, 2, 3, 4 for the x's and the 0, 1, 2, 3 for the y's. That's simple. Okay, next up we've got evaluating a function. So evaluating a function means solving it for a given number. So for instance, if they've given us this function, f of x equals 5 minus 2x, and they tell us to solve it for x equals 3. That means we're going to take the x's in here and replace them with 3. So that the function of 3 equals 5 minus 2 times 3. Right? And then 2 times 3 is 6. 5 minus 6 is negative 1. So the function of 3 equals negative 1. Now, how does that translate into a point on a graph? Well, the if the x equals 3, then that means the other one is the y, is negative 1. So it goes 3, negative 1. Sometimes they'll give you a function and a point, a coordinate point, and say, is this coordinate point a solution to this uh, function? What you do when they ask that is you take the x, the 2, and you put it in for this x. And you see if it produces the y. So what I mean by that is take the 2, replace it for this x. You replace that x with a 2, and let's see, that would be 2 times 2 gives you 4, plus 4. 4 plus 4 is 8, which means this 2 produced 8. So yes, this point uh, is on this line. And finally, we have word problems. Uh, I'll just do the first one with you. Maria makes $12 per hour. The amount of money she makes in X hours is given by the function f of X equals 12X. How much money did Maria make if she worked 25 hours in one week? Okay, so that's f of X equals 12X. That's what they gave us. They gave us X equals 25 because that's the number of hours she worked. So then you just do 25 times 12. 2 times 5 is 10. 2 times 2 is 4 is 5. 0. 1 times 5 is 5. 1 times 2 is 2. 0. 0. 300. Get out of the glare there. She made $300. And that does it for Lesson 3.1. I'll see you in 3.2.